Stop, wait, stop. Hi, I'm Michael. I recently got a new car, but it has this one feature that I really can't stand. And to turn this feature off, I have to push this button every single time I get in the car. It's this auto idle stop feature. What it does is that every time the car comes to a stop, like at a stoplight or in heavy traffic, it kills the engine. The engine died. It feels like my car just died or like I ran out of gas. This button here with the A on it, that turns the feature off and it prevents the engine from randomly shutting down whenever it wants to. So my brilliant plan is to design a little robot to push that button for me. And the whole thing should be able to fit inside the cup holder. Every time the car turns on, a little robot finger will pop out of the cup, push the button, and then fold itself back into the cup holder. Yeah, that's gonna happen. I'd love to be able to tell you that I designed this in one sitting, but actually it took over a month of working here and there, and it took several versions to get it to this point. So here's the basic design. Under the cup lid and inside the shell, I have a three segment finger that is tucked tightly inside the cup. The servos are down below and each one has a servo horn wheel. I'll be using fishing line to transfer the motion from the servos to the finger joints. And the whole thing is controlled by a tiny Arduino. Here's how it's supposed to work. A fishing line runs from the wheel on the servo to a spindle, wraps around it and then attaches to a joint. The other side of the line wraps the opposite direction around each spindle and attaches to the other side of the joint. When the servo turns, it pulls one side of the line and that side of the joint, turning it. When the servo turns the other way, the other side of the line pulls on the other side of the joint, turning it the opposite direction. In my design, to get the force where it needs to be, the line travels through a spindle at each joint on its way to get to the one it turns. Looping around these extra spindles keeps the line tight no matter what orientation the other joints are in. Without them, the tension could get lost as the joint rotates. I really need to stop calling it a robot finger because that just sounds wrong. So there were a couple of complexities that I struggled with in this project. First was just that I needed to be able to assemble the whole thing once it's printed. And that could be really difficult because the thing is very small, kind of like trying to build a ship inside of a bottle. This can print directly on the plate with almost no supports. I pre-built in the supports here in the holes and anything that would have been an overhang has angled pieces. Like these two shelves were overhangs, but I made them separate pieces that can be slid into place after they're printed. The second concern is how to print it, because I like to print things right on the build plate with no supports if possible. And for this, that meant printing the finger segments in halves that can be glued together after. Hey Dad, I have a question. What if the motors aren't actually strong enough to push the button? I printed everything on the Epax E10 4K. I've been wanting a mid-size printer for a while, so I was really happy to get this one. Links to purchase this printer are in my description and it really helps me out when you use those links. Okay, well let's talk about cheap servos. I already had these small servos on hand, so I designed it around these. These cheap tiny servos aren't very accurate, so I made a little tool to calibrate the servos. The issue is that even with calibration, they don't always land on the same angle. I needed a little bit more accuracy than that, so I upgraded to these. They're a little better, but still not great. The problem is they're also slightly larger than the blue ones, so I'll have to make some minor modifications during assembly to deal with that. I didn't want to use glue in this project, but I didn't design a way to hold the servos in place. So I went ahead and glued them in. In my design, I forgot a couple of things. I forgot a couple of access holes, and I didn't plan enough room for the wiring to trace everywhere it needs to go. I also decided to add a button in there so I could activate the robot. So I had to do a lot of modification with drilling and filing. Okay, next was hooking up the wiring so I could turn on the servos and get them to their center positions before running the fishing line. To test this first joint, I can type an angle into the Arduino console and it should go to that angle. <laughs> it looks like it works, so I'm gonna move on to the next two joints. What? No, no, no. No, oh, what did I do? 
crap. So I made a mistake. Somehow in my rush to get it assembled, I forgot to loop a line around one of the spindles and there's no way to fix it. Okay, I forgot to loop the line around one of the base spindles. And when the bottom joint turns, this other line loses all its tension. And because I was overconfident, I cut and glued in those lines. So the line has to be replaced. But because I glued in the servos, there's no way to get to where I can replace the line. So this one is toast. Well, the good thing about 3D printing is you can just print again. I also discovered this problem. When the first joint turns, the next one automatically turns in the opposite direction. That's because when this joint turns, the other line is being pulled as well. If the servos had more than 180 degrees of motion, I could fix it with code, but now the workaround is that instead of running the line around these spindles at the joints, I'll run the line through a Bowden tube. That should make it so the joints only turn when their servo turns. So here's version two. This one has a path for the Bowden tube. I also fixed some of the other problems with version one. I planned for the larger servos, and now they can be screwed in so I don't have to glue them in. I added the hole for the button. I also decided that I need an LED to tell me what's going on, so I added a hole for an LED to shine through. And I added paths for all the wiring. On this one I'm using rub and buff to make it look like metal. I also printed the fingertip using a flexible resin. I don't want the fingertip to scratch the button in the car when it pushes down on it. This flexible resin is awesome. It's called F69 and it's from Reza1. The F69 is black, but they also make a white version called F39. I really love this resin. I can't wait to print some other projects with it. If you have any ideas of what I could print with this resin, let me know in a comment below. Inside the tip of the finger goes a photo resistor. I should be able to have the robot also check the light on the button to see whether the option is turned on or not. It's gonna be tricky, but I think I can do that. To connect it to the Arduino, I needed a really thin and flexible wire. So I scrapped a headphones wire and I used that. As I said, I also added this LED to let me know what's going on. It's an APA 102 that comes in a long strand like this. So here's the plan. When I turn the car on, it powers up the USB port and the center console. I don't want it just moving without any warning. So the LED displays a five second countdown, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. At any time during the countdown, I can push the button to stop the countdown. I can also push the button to restart the countdown. And I do realize that pushing a button to have the robot push another button is a little bit like a useless machine. But if it works, it'll be like the most useful useless machine. Okay. But if it doesn't work, it's gonna be the most useless useless machine. Stop, wait, stop. Let's see if it works. Turn on the car, it's blinking. Green, yellow, orange, red. Okay, it's trying. I tried having it just gently push the button in, but it couldn't do it that way. So now I'm having it just whack it to see if it can do it. It's programmed to try 10 times to see if it can turn that light. It's just not, it just can't do it. So at this point, I guess I do have to call this project a fail. Declan was right and the servo is not strong enough to push the button in. I thought it would be because it doesn't take hardly any force to push that button in but I guess for now, I will have to push the button myself. So let's talk about some of the other issues there were with this design. The biggest issue was the servos. They were the bane of the project. They had limited motion and also weren't strong enough or accurate enough. Honestly, I had so many issues with them. It's why it took so long to get this video done. So the next time I make a robot, I'll be using much better actuators. I think using the fishing line as tendons also caused some problems. Some sort of geared or direct drive would probably be better. The other issue was that when I started the project, I mismeasured the cup holder and my design only used about half of the available space I had in there. So if I were to do it again, I would fix that and it wouldn't be such a tight fit. Hey, so I don't actually recommend that you try to build one of these. It's just a silly robot. But links to the code, parts, and 3D files for this project are in the description. 